Hello, this is Will Lucas. Welcome to my video blog, Surfing with Cancer, my second Vietnam. This is the fifth in a series based on my letters written home in 1966, November. In an odd way, I found my experiences in the Army very similar to surfing. Both were humbling experiences and taught you respect. The appearances didn't matter, race, religion, those kinds of things. It was how you performed. For me personally, it, both experiences helped build my self-esteem. I was never really good in organized sports, but in the mid-60s, surfing was a relatively new sport on the East Coast, and I did okay. While I was in the Army, doing basic training, I excelled in the obstacle courses for some reason, and it really helped me. I also had a heads up because I was experienced in music and actually got to lead my squad in in uh, marches, counting cadence, and making up songs along the way, and just having a lot of fun. And today, as I'm dealing with terminal cancer, I try to learn from my experiences in Vietnam and surfing. Learn from your mistakes, back check before reacting, keep things in perspective, and stay happy, keep a smile on your face. In my October blog, I talked about the fact that after three months, we were still living in tents with dirt floors. Conditions were improving some. The rain let up, and we were getting entertainment like the Hondells or movies, things like that. But for me, I was still recovering from being robbed and had to borrow some money to buy things. In November, conditions continued to improve. However, the VC became more brazen and most of our outfit was involved near the Cambodian border in Operation Paul Revere. I was fortunate that most of my time during November was spent at the base camp, and I was uh, able to write letters home, borrowed a typewriter, learned how to type. Um, but even with that, nobody was safe. Letter, 1 November 66. Hi, I just finished mailing your other letter when the general alarm went off. I got a call on the telephone and they told me to stand by the radio. I then got a call on the radio that 78 VC had been spotted between the base camp and the blacktop road, which is only about one mile from where I'm typing this letter. I don't see how in the world they got so close to camp without being noticed. They didn't even get to drop one mortar in. I don't know what happened to them, whether they were captured or shot down. I guess I'll find out tomorrow. Anyway, the alert is over now, and the fun is over too. A little while ago, we had a slight accident down at the motor pool. Some of the NCOs were taking ammunition out of one of the connexes. When they pulled out a box of grenades, one of them fell out. One of the sergeants noticed that it didn't have a pin in it. He picked it up and threw it. It went off. It put holes in two of the vehicles and one of the sergeant's legs. If he hadn't been thinking, it would have probably killed him and about five others. We also had a little accident yesterday. One of the guys was repairing a truck tire and a piece of the equipment he was using broke off and went into his head. It nearly killed him. A lot of things were happening lately. Don't you wish you were here? We were all working in less than ideal conditions, yet the heavy equipment had to be maintained. My name is John Patella. I was in Charlie Company 4th Engineers, 4th Infantry Division from 1965 to 1967. I was the company electrician, welder, and carpenter, and we did many other things, and I maintained the uh, generators. And uh, while I was down at the motor pool, one incident that happened down there was a guy named Dave McEwen. He was changing a tire on a five-ton dump truck, and he, as he was trying to get the rim off, it flew off and hit him in the head. Uh, he had many stitches and a lot of bruising, but he was okay. He did come back to work. He was able to come back to work after he healed. Uh, since that happened, and it was so dangerous to pull that rim off, I built a cage um, out of two inch tubing that you put the tire inside this cage and when you pull that rim off, if it did shoot out, it hit the cage rather than the person changing the tire. That was a safety feature that we, we thought of down in, in Vietnam. Another incident that happened in Vietnam was a, one of the guys was changing a battery on his truck, putting a new one in, 
but he didn't ask anyone how and what to put in as far as the acid and water. He put straight acid in. As he put the acid in, he lifted the battery up and the acid burned the bottom of the battery and ran down, the acid ran down his legs. Tom Piffero and I were right nearby when we saw this happen and we grabbed him and we put him in a 55 gallon drum of rainwater. Uh, it, it helped a lot and we sent him off to the uh, medics. Letter, 5 November 66. Hi, I bought myself a suit the other day. It's made of English silk and worsted. I got it at the PX. They've got a whole bunch of Chinese guys working there. They measure you and make any kind of suit that you want. The suits are made in Hong Kong. It takes about six weeks to get the suit. Today, one of the guys in my company was critically injured. One of the platoons is over by the Cambodian border building roads. He was planting dynamite in a tree stump and it went off. His right arm and left leg were fractured. I'm not quite as depressed as I was a couple of weeks ago. I haven't been to town lately. The place doesn't even oppress me. If you happen to go near any electronic stores, how about seeing if they sell cartridges for the Knight 990A turntable? My record player is doing absolutely no good without a needle. I think they're going to lay cement forms for our mess hall today. That's about it for now. Letter 111466. I wish there was something to write about. I've been quite busy lately. They've been giving us all kinds of extra details lately. Now, the other radio operator is on R&R &R and things are even tighter. Our company may have to move down to the Oasis where our first platoon has been constructing a road in the Operation Paul Revere. I hope not, because they get fired at or mortared just about every day. Two nights ago, two of the engineers were killed one from B Company and one from D Company. They were killed during a mortar attack. The guy from D Company's name was Deadman. He stood up in his foxhole to see what was going on. I didn't hear how the guy from B Company was killed. My good buddy Lanny from Baltimore dropped the tailgate of his personnel carrier on his foot. He's laid up for about two weeks. So long for now. Heavy equipment operators were at risk in and out of camp. Hi, my name is Joe Papone. I served with the 4th Infantry Division C Company 4th Engineers from 1965 to 1967. We were deployed to Vietnam in uh, July of 1966. I served with uh, Will Lucas who was a radio operator and I just wanted to add a little uh, to his video blog. Um, I was a uh, 64 B20 truck driver and I uh, just wanted to mention the vulnerability that the truck drivers and heavy equipment operators had when we served over there. And on numerous occasions, uh, we would go out on the road and uh, VC would plant mines on the road. And unfortunately, uh, a few of our trucks hit some mines. We had our bulldozer operator, uh, Larry Pugh, was riding shotgun on a bulldozer. And his bulldozer was hit with an RGP round. He lost both of his legs. Uh, I was uh, going to fly out to see him. They arranged for me to see him as he asked for me. Unfortunately, it was canceled the last minute and I never got to see him. Uh, he moved to California and his life was never the same after that. I was in touch with him and his sister 
and I believe a few years back, about 10 years ago, uh, he had passed away. Letter postmarked November 20th, 1966. Hi, guess where I am? Out inside a bunker. I'm on guard in a way. I'm not responsible for watching Charlie, just for answering the phone in case anyone else sees him. I could complain if I wanted, because there's supposed to be a Sergeant E5 or above out here. I won't though, because they'd probably jump back on me for something. I've got two phones in here. One goes to the bunkers, one to the battalion. Every two hours, I call the bunkers and get a situation report, and in turn, I call battalion and give one to them. I've been quite busy lately. The other radio operator is on R&R &R and has been gone for about a week and a half. He should be getting back today, so things should slow down a little. Our guys are starting to come back from Paul Revere. I'm glad of that. That means I won't have to go. There's a real war going on over there by the Cambodian border, and I can do without seeing it. Only 227 days left over here. In about another week and a half, I'll have a year gone, halfway. I don't really care about the year to go. It's the 227 days that I care about. Letter, 25 November, 66. Hi, I've been quite busy lately. We moved all the radios out of the tent into our new commo shack. We had Thanksgiving dinner yesterday at noon. It was pretty good, but nothing like back home. Things are starting to brighten up around here. Every Tuesday, we have American Red Cross girls eat dinner with us. We have a huge Cinemascope movie screen. Soon, they'll have television in. They're getting floors in all the tents. I'm on CQ again. It's been raining since last night. That's the first time it rained in about two weeks. You asked me if I got to church. Every Sunday there's two services. You won't believe the package Mrs. B sent me. All kinds of toys. A paddleboard with a ball on the end, cowboys and Indians, a baby doll, a toy car, a red rubber ball, a package of balloons, and a money belt for trips to Natrang. Letter dated 28 November 1966. Hi, I'm on CQ again. I've got the late shift. It's 10 now and I get off at 2. I received the needle two days ago. I really appreciate you getting it for me. I'll have to take a picture of my setup when I get a hold of a camera. Yesterday I had a pass, but instead of going to town, I stayed around and worked on my equipment. I built a table to set my tape deck, amplifier, and turntable on. I made it out of a piece of 1 by 12 maple. It measures 48 inches long and sits 10 inches off the ground. I made the legs out of 2 by 2. I planed them cylindrical, then tapered them, one and a half inches at the top, one inch at the bottom. After assembling, I stained it with walnut, and it almost looks like the real thing. I think we, the other radio operator and myself, will be moving out of our tent into one of the new tents which they recently set up. I've got a little two-burner Coleman stove beside me trying to keep warm. Letter, 30 November 1966. Hi. It's three in the afternoon. I can remember what I was doing at three o'clock last November 30th. I was sitting around moping because I'd be in the army the next day. I hadn't figured then that I'd be sitting in Vietnam a year from then writing letters back home. I remember I went to Shepherd Park restaurant with Jimmy Brulis and Dennis Boone when I should have stayed home with my family. If I had known then that I'd see so little of my family in the next years, I wouldn't have even thought about going out. It's too late to think about that now, but when I get home and have a 30-day leave to look forward to, you best believe that most of my time will be spent with my parents. After that, I'll still have another 15 days leave coming, which I missed before coming over here. It's hard to believe it's been a year. It seems more like a lifetime. Bye for now. In our fourth month in country, we were finally getting some creature comforts. We were building a mess hall, and we finally moved into tents with wooden floors, kept our underwear and boots dry. Communication was still rather rudimentary. There were hard-wired field radios going to the bunkers. They were hand-cranked, and the wires were laying on the ground. We were still using M14s at the time. War was a crazy thing. It was a very sobering experience for me. Nobody was safe. 
I couldn't surf anymore, so I focused on music. My letters home were tapering off. I became reflective and withdrawn. I was homesick, especially with the holidays coming. It's odd. I put the Vietnam War behind me for 40 years, never really talked about it to anybody. But lately, I've been thinking about the other soldiers that I served with. Three years ago, two of the fellows tracked me down, and it's been a wonderful experience reuniting with them and several others. Just recently, I had the urge to find one of my best friends over there, Rick Meyer. He was our company clerk, kept me informed on many, many things. We flew home from Vietnam together, and his mom picked us up at the airport around the D.C. area. I hadn't told my parents I was home yet. I didn't want anything to go wrong. They dropped me off at the base of my street. I walked up the hill in uniform with my duffel bag. As I was hoping, there was my mom in the front window doing the dishes. She looked out in disbelief. It was a really emotional experience. <laughs>